and we are back sorry about that the call dropped and guys you're not going to believe this it the call dropped at 11 11 and it was one hour and 44 minutes into our <laughs> conversation because <laughs> we had so been talking amazing. before we started recording <laughs> That was great. <laughs> Gotta love the synchronicities. Oh my. Mm -hmm. So Marisa, you were talking about um, how you were going through separation from Joe and you were crying at the same time channeling information about how to get back with him and thanking your guides for yes the for experience. guiding me yeah and really it was like I started listening to myself you know and, and throughout this whole process I never looked at what Joe could do. Like I wasn't pulling at his energy or blaming him for like what we were going through. Um, I felt like, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt like the whole time things were happening for a reason. And because I wanted union and I called into union, like this had to happen. You know, like I, I felt like what we were going through was going to help us better communicate, to be honest. Like I knew that was coming. I didn't know mm -hmm. how it was going to come. Um, but I felt like this, this period of time would help us communicate better. Um, and I'll let you explain that. Do you want to share any, like anything that your guides were perhaps telling you to do? Do you remember mm. anything off the top of your head? I have, when I channel, like I totally black out sometimes. Um, yeah, me I, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have it written down. I just don't have it in a notebook, like really super close to me. Okay. Um, but I'll be more than happy to maybe, um, share that at a later time. Uh, maybe we can collaborate on that. Um, yeah. but it would be a, a really good, definitely opportunity to communicate directly with the, um, with the chasers <laughs> yeah. at that point, you know, um, it, it was, um, it was such an amazing experience, and all I knew is I need to work on myself. I need to work on myself because the more I work on myself, the more I'm helping him work on himself. You know, that's what I kind of like the whole time. That's how I looked at it. What was if funny, I, um, because uh, you were talking about how you were bringing everything back to yourself, and mm -hmm. it was funny when I asked Joe what he, what was going on with him. He said the same thing. I was yes. bringing everything back to myself. So you were mirroring each other. And perhaps we it was your influence that was helping him be able to um, to look. In. To, yeah. yeah, like to see the truth, right? I 100% believe that, Marla, because I was doing this like right off the bat. You know, December we separated and I'm like crying and I'm like channeling. And, you know, this time period he's talking about where he's, like, thinking about this stuff is more like January, you know, like, crossing into February. So, like, I know that what I'm doing is working because I'm seeing him, like, reflect, you know, and I'm seeing him mention certain words and things into conversations that I'm like, hmm, that's exactly, you know, like, what I was channeling and that's exactly what I was trying to say. Um, so it definitely helped, you know, like I knew I was supporting him and I knew he would be back, <laughs> you know, like something inside of me told me, you know, like, don't worry, this is part of the process. Just keep working on you, but do you, you know, like I knew at that point too, that I had to start to do my own thing. Um, so during this time period, I started to think about, um, starting a surrogacy journey because it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and since we weren't together you know at mm -hmm. that point like what was I waiting on I just needed to go ahead and go for it um so I started the application process and I've always been an advocate of the underdog of people that have been mistreated their whole life um so my initial purpose was was to help maybe um a gay couple that couldn't reproduce <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um but that kind of led into other things and um, you know, even though we weren't together, we reached a point, a point of amicability. So, um, it was kind of hostile at first. You know, we weren't throwing anything or being angry. He was just like not wanting to stare at me or look at me <laughs> or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was still me, you know, and I, and I wasn't going to change me. Um, and for Christmas, I got him a little present, 
you know, like, I just wanted to do something special for him. He was going to go visit his mom. Um, so I wrapped up some gum because I knew it was practical. He'd probably need it on the plane. I'm an um, experienced traveler, so I know that's, like, one of the things you need to have. Um, and at the moment I gave him that, it was like it changed the energy, you know. So up to that point, it was like, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. I gave him this gift and he appreciated me for being who I was, you know, and the energy started to change where we were at least talking, you know. Um, we weren't intimate or connecting at that point, but at least it opened up an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, from there, that's when I started doing my own thing. You know, I even considered, like, you know, looking elsewhere. You know, like, well, he doesn't want me, you know, but that's my ego at that point. You know, this is just things I kind of battled with. Like, well, he doesn't want me, so, you know, there was people that were interested in me, you know, but it just, it didn't work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nothing I did. But, you know, it was like, I couldn't really put any interest in that because I had none. <laughs> so, um I just, I forgot about it, you know, like I tried, but I couldn't, so, oh well. So then I'm like focused on the surrogacy and moving on with my life. And then um, even through the, these classes we were taking with our mentor, Tina, um, we had a, a mutual friend there who is a clinical therapist. And I've always been obsessed with psychology and doing therapy. So she kind of inspired me to maybe go back to school. And Joe really encouraged me to go back to school. Um, so because, again, I was on a journey to do my own thing. I wasn't focused on him. I decided to go back to school. You know, and like surrogacy for me was like a means. You know, like, okay, well, I could go to school. I could do the surrogacy at the same time. It could help me go back to school because I can help pay for school. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, at this point, it wasn't, I transcended that stage of like, oh, my God, I'm hurting so bad to the he's doing what he needs to do. And he's working on himself and I'm supporting him because now I'm working on myself and I'm taking away energy from focusing on him to focusing on me. And now I'm following my journey and what I've always wanted to do, the surrogacy. And I know I had to go back to school, you know, so um, so now I'm back in school. You know, applied for the social work, the bachelor's of social work program to eventually get my master's and do this clinical therapy. So I will have my own practice one day where, like, I'm helping people in the same way that I've been able to kind of, like, deal and cope with my emotions, help them go through those same things, you know, mm -hmm. and focus on a mental health aspect. So as I'm going through all this, um, one day, you know, we're watching a movie and it was in February last year, actually, so a year ago, because um, I remember, because I have dates that come to me, <laughs> you know, like I knew December was going to be an important date, and February is always an important date. Um, so last year, we were just watching a movie, and it was, um, uh, it was the Avenger movie, I forget now what it was, it was the spiritual one. Doctor Strange. Strange. Yeah, Doctor Strange. So we're watching, and how, if you've seen that movie. <laughs> yes, I have. I <laughs> <You> love know, it. <laughs> there's so many things there. Well, all of a sudden, he pulls me close to him. You know, he just pulls me to him and, like, starts crying, you know? And I don't know if you say sorry or something along those lines, but at this point, I'm like, oh, my God, it's happening. <laughs> you know, like... So, you know, there's, there's progress, so to speak. Well, let's hear from Joe, if we could, from, yeah. from his perspective of what was going on with I, him during his separation and what leads up to you, him kind of reconnecting with you. So that last piece she was talking about, that was actually allergies. <laughs> but um, we're not going to talk about that. No. From the cat, right? <laughs> yeah, from the cat. From the cat. Yeah. <laughs> so... <clears throat> This whole time, excuse me, <coughs> this whole time, we both have kind of gone our def different ways. And in my mind, you know, I've always had this saying to never gamble something you're not willing to lose. And every, all my guides are telling me you're on the right path. This is where you're supposed to be. And I'm looking at him like, you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then the other thing is, how do you know? Like, how, like for me, the biggest fear is making the wrong decision. I feel like my mother made the wrong decision. And I was like, I don't want to make the wrong decision. And do you know how hard it is to hide when there's kids around? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I try to stay on the couch. And I'm talking about physically and emotionally. Mm-hmm. Like, I try to sleep on the couch and the kids getting up. Six o'clock in the morning to go to school, and I'm like, "Oh, take the blanket, run it back upstairs." You know, I don't want to put anything crazy out there, but also these kids, they deserve love. So I'm not going to treat them any differently based on the title or situation that Marisa and I are going through at this time. So for me, this was a healing situation for me. Marisa gives me space. She gives me space to process, process all the information I need to process and the emotions that have been left unprocessed as I'm doing research on pain bodies. And I can literally feel that, you know what, this is a huge pain body for me. I researched my father, his actions, the past situation, my grandmother, my mother, and I'm going to literally recreate the same exact situation that I said I didn't want to do. And I look myself in the mirror and I say it. You ask for every single situation that you're in right now. You ask for this. You don't want it now. And the thing, I had to look at myself and said, I've got to release. I've got to trust. And I've got to move without fear. 2017, I told myself, I cannot move in fear. Because that's the energy that keeps you in fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, you're easily controlled because you can only go two ways. You can fight or flight or run. Mm -hmm. So as I start to kind of tackle these issues and I notice Marita growing. So it's funny how she's saying that she changes herself and she sees the changes in me. And I feel like I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm going to take the (laughs) higher road. (laughs) I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to be the bigger guy. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be, because end of the day it's about respect. I respect her as a person. I trust her as a person. Relationship-wise, it's like trying to fight in the dark. You get hit all over the place, and you don't know where the punches are coming from. It's just so confusing, and you're just in a panic mode. And that's how I was in when I got into the relationship, and I found out that, oh, my gosh, she wants to be an item. She wants a label. I'm like, oh, no, not a label. <laughs> the next day we're going to be Facebook official <laughs> no. <laughs> I've avoided this my whole life <laughs> how did I let this happen <laughs> so I'm trying to back out I'm trying to back out of everything I need returns this is the 14 day return policy no it is not okay. <laughs> keep in mind I got rid of all my furniture before I moved in and I said I feel like the universe is removing all my excuses and my mind, I'm supposed to move to Cuba, Jamaica, Florida, somewhere, just get out here. But the one thing that really inspired me is that Marita is such an amazing soul. She's like that <laughs> rainbow butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she comes out of the cocoon and just her colors are just shining. And I can only respect that even in a situation, she's got another grown person in here in her house that doesn't want anything to do with her but she's still showing me love i'm showing love to the children because she's got her kids and i've got my my son and they're looking at each other like they're brothers and sisters because that's in front of the kids we're putting on respectful environment because what i grew up in was very chaotic and i told myself my children will never go through or experience what I went through as a child, as a young adult. And I made it a point that we were never going to argue in front of these children. We will never argue in public. So I took the road of respect. And as I started to see Marisa grow, then it inspired me to, you know, let me take a little step closer. Let me let down this wall a little bit. And as we're watching Dr. Strange, I don't know what happened, but I was like, the last piece of me that was holding back just just fell off, just literally just fell off. And I grabbed her and I started crying. And the tears 
weren't of sadness. They weren't of joy. It was just, these are the tears that I've been holding back for so long. If you fight all your life, and you're fighting to survive all your life. Like I told you, I've been on my own since I was 16 years old. I used to be homeless. I put myself through college, and my whole life I've been running. Running, running, running. And I always thought I was too late. And when, if you know anything about like running, when you first take off, your head's down, and you're running as hard as you possibly can go. It doesn't matter what's around you, but you're just trying to run as hard as you can. The next stage, you lift your head up. You assess your situation, and you start to stride out. My whole life, my head has been down, and I know I was running from the situation that I was in, trying to get somewhere. I had no idea where I was running. I was running like a chicken with his head cut off, just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And as conflicts would arise, it would literally be a life and death situation. Maritza, she has a problem with my, the business, it's a, a client. It's a life and death situation. If I don't get this resolved, if I don't get rid of her, I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to be broke. I'm going to be out on the streets. I'm not, I'm going to lose everything I ever worked for. So I've got to fight to protect it. And what came to me was the six and a nine. If you put a, you write a nine in front of somebody, they see a six, you see a nine. Who's right? <laughs> we're both right. Mm -hmm. And we're both wrong at the same time. Mm-hmm. The one part of the nine has a curve on it. Her part of the nine is a straight line. As we're communicating, it just really dawned on me that this is the example I need to use anytime I get triggered by a pain body. Number one, realize that this is a pain body. It no longer has power over me. Two, realize that nobody communicates with the same language. We use the same words, but we do not communicate the exact same way. Somebody can see blue. That blue, how do you know that blue is is exactly the same as the blue that somebody sees in their vision? So being able to take a step back, and I told myself, I want to overcome this. And Maritza, again, has saved my life in this situation because I knew I wanted to break this bond, this curse, break this cycle. And by her giving me space, allowed me to give her space to allow her to heal and allow me to heal myself. And together, we are stronger together than we are apart. And I truly believe that. And that's where we are today right now. And I'm on the phone having a conversation with you. <laughs> I used to see you on TV. <laughs> uh, and um, I accidentally FaceTimed for you. And I see you face to face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't want to go, but we don't want to talk about that. No. <laughs> That's fast forward. Because I didn't make up on, my hair wasn't done. <laughs> and it was a blessing. It was a blessing, yeah. It was a little well, surreal, I look too, forward I to meeting to you guys in person. Oh, yes, we must. Um, well, I mean, I met you, Maritza, in person, but I haven't met Joe. Yeah, and it was a surreal experience, you know, because I see you on YouTube all the time, and then... We have this Twin Flame conference, which happened, you know, that summer after me and Joe reconnected. And, you know, it took some time. You know, it's not like, oh, so now we're back together. No, like, I didn't even know what we were still at that point. I just knew that we were um, getting closer, you know, that something was breaking through, <laughs> you know. Um, I had another birthday and, and this time we went to the beach at Myrtle Beach and I got to see the sunrise again. And it was such an amazing experience. And from there, it was like, I didn't feel him resisting us anymore. Um, so I knew that we could maybe work on it. <laughs> but we still weren't talking feelings or emotions or what are we or what are we not. You know, we're just living day to day. And I felt like I was okay with that. Like, I, I truly appreciated every part of that process <clears throat> because... I was no longer in that pain, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. that excruciating pain that, um, you know, like he wasn't there. At least he was here now, you know, like he's present. He's here. I'm so appreciative. And um, summer rolls around and um, we have this twin flame conference. And um, what I forgot an to mention at the beginning that, that that was where we met. I mean, I had been... Um, talking to you before the conference but yes. but you came to the conference and I got to meet you in person 
Yes, yes. And that was surreal. It was so amazing to be able to meet Marla. And I was Stop I was a little it. late because I was like driving up from um from where I am to Chicago. So I I didn't get there like right off the bat. And when I got there, man, that energy in that room was so amazing and I got to meet some amazing people. When I first got there, I went to the to the restroom first, you know, because I'd been in the car for like five hours. And um, somebody walks in, this very majestic-looking goddess person, (laughs) and she comes up to me and she says, Maritza? (laughs) And I'm like, who is this? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And it happened to be my dear friend Adi. Um, And from then, we've had this amazing connection, and she actually does have a part in our story, too. Um, But um, that conference, I got to meet all these people, and... It was like there was so much love shared, you know, like the kind of love that you want from your twin. That was the kind of love that I felt there. And like I didn't have to be with my twin at that point in time. It was like it was just there. Um, And it was very nice to be able to uh, meet face to face with people that are going through the same things. And it was like to me, this twin flame process is like spirituality times 10. (laughs) You know, it's like a, a fast paced ascension program <laughs> into Definitely, yeah. healing yourself and, and, and being able to get to this high vibrational state. So um, what I did realize at that conference is that I was blocking our union this whole time. Like I was blocking us getting closer together because I had my heart chakra was closed. You know, like mm-hmm. I was protecting myself this whole time. <laughs> you know, I wasn't allowing it um, to move forward. And um, Kalina, dear Kalina, she um, did something to my heart. I don't know what she did, but she took something out. <laughs> and um, and and Debbie, you know, doing that hope. What is it? The hope pono? No, ho'opono, I can't ho'opono. say. It. Yes, that <laughs> <laughs> um, released so many things. And to be honest, like at that point, I'm like, I claim it. Like we are together. <laughs> like we're here. We're in the space. We are together. Like I don't see us not being together so I'm just gonna um you know the only block I had was my mind you know telling me that we weren't so yeah so you're basically saying you claim like I'm in union well I didn't claim I was in union per se yes actually I did I mean in your yeah. head you were like yeah this is available to me I, it is I have available. this here I have this and he's right here you know we are living in what looks like a relationship it's healthier than the two marriages I've had (laughs) you know um so yeah I claim it it's mine (laughs) not possessively but you know (laughs) um so uh time goes on um and you know we're getting closer um my parents actually um come up here and live with us for a little bit because they're in Puerto Rico and they get hit by the hurricane and um, everything happens for a reason because my dad himself, he's a twin, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, and their love and the connection that they share truly helped us, you know, grow even more um, to another level. You know, their, their guidance, their advice, just everything kind of hit home with us. And, um, um, and then Adi came and visited us um, one time and she talked about energy in the home. And she felt like there was some stagnant energy that was preventing us, you know, from even getting closer together. And we actually took her advice. And since then, like, that helped out a lot. Immediately. Immediately. (laughs) You know, we moved some things around and, like, bam, like, there was more flow for for our energy, you know. So um, we connected even more at that point. And then finally, you know, it was, like, around Christmas time on the – Equinox, twelve twenty one. <laughs> which, oh, which, the re- uh, rebirth of the masculine. The rebirth of the masculine <laughs> at that point in time, and it was like we finally had this conversation where we like let it all out. <laughs> you know, I was able to be. Well, let me say this: from the conference, one thing I really got was that I needed to be my true, authentic self. And there was so much authenticity in that room that I couldn't come back and not be my true authentic self. So coming back and integrating 
um, with my life, I knew that it had to be more me, (laughs) you know, not hiding, not uh, making excuses for anything, just simply saying what I needed to say. Now, I was still selective because I knew that there were certain things that could be um, triggers. And the point was not to not trigger him because it's okay to trigger your twin. Like, that's how they grow. Uh, but you kind of have to play chess a little bit. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You can't mm-hmm. just say something and be rude. Right. You know, you can't. Some... Uh, you, spirit really guides the triggers. It's not up to you to try and create triggers to force someone into something. Exactly. Exactly. So I also had to be selective. Like sometimes, like I really wanted to say something. Well, if I'm being authentic and I want to be true to myself, I need to talk about this right here and now. But that really would have been unnatural. So I knew that something was still holding me back, but it was on purpose, you know, and then things would come out naturally later on um, when I was ready or when we were ready to talk about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So and I allowed that process to unfold naturally, you know, on the um, equinox on the rebirth of the masculine. We finally um, let everything out. You know, we were able to talk about our emotions and the relationship itself and the direction we were going and. Um, it was, you know, the happiest Christmas ever (laughs) for me because, um, we really had a nice setup for the kids. And, um, I remember I'm, I'm big on meditating in the, in the shower and that's when I would normally talk to my guides. Okay. Well, what do I need to do now? You know, like, what do I need to focus on now? And I just remember that day, like literally crying and being so thankful and like just literally screaming in my head to my guides. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> We're here. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I just kept, you know, really, you just have to be so thankful and grateful, you know, for this experience. Like, we're here. We have a purpose. And, um, that's really, I was just so thankful. Like, that's all I can think about. It was just being thankful. And now I felt like, okay, we can move into our journey, into our purpose, into what we are here to do. And we can talk about it. You know, we could be more open with each other. And that's really what that started, you know, but it, you know, not to say that we are void of difficulties and, you know, there's still, you know, a a push pull here and there, but now we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. you know, and now we can like directly guide each other through it. Um, and you know, I still have to, you know, I still have triggers, you know, and he still has triggers. Um, and it's a matter of just taking it day by day. Uh, but I'm so thankful for that experience I had throughout the separation because I learned what I needed to do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. If it had not been for that, I would have not been ready. And I would have still somehow, sabotaged our relationship um you know just because I wouldn't have known how to deal with it right so um and then here we are (laughs) today being able to openly talk about this when you know I really hadn't even talked to him about twin flames too much like I mentioned it you know and I expressed that that's who I felt we were you know um but I didn't I never pushed it the label with him you know I never um, try to convince him, you know, that, Hey, we're twins, you know, like I just let things go. Like I felt like I needed that twin flame community so I can make sense of this process. And, um, and I was guided by Marla, (laughs) my dear Marla, (laughs) um, throughout this whole entire process, um, from that separation period till today, (laughs) you know, even today I, I still need guidance. Um, but I'm able to process things on another level because I'm no longer like my energy is not being expended towards, you know, chasing, chasing, chasing. It's about growing, growing, growing. I don't give you guidance. I give you confirmation. <laughs> yes. Well, that's true. But you do. But you do. <laughs> There's things there. She's always spot on, guys. Like, I am telling you. And it is always a divine timing. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm asking myself something. And, you know, oh, I know I have a reading coming up sometime. And then she delivers the reading and bam. <laughs> and like, it's all right there. You know, so I don't know, like this connection that I have, um, with Marla.
is insane, but I know she has this effect on everybody because <laughs> I'm helping her with these emails and I'm, I'm seeing everybody connecting with her. So she's amazing. Um, Thank you. I, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't say enough <laughs> um, because truly, truly, I mean, I know I've done a lot of work in this process and Joe has done an immense amount of work. And let me tell you at first or throughout this process, I blamed him for like not doing the work and we know how that goes. And then when I decided to appreciate that, you know what, he is doing the work. I just can't see it. You know, just because I can't um, tangibly see it right now doesn't mean he's not doing it. And when I learn to support him and accept that he's doing the work too, like, that's when things really started happening, like with the Doctor Strange movie and everything, you know, uh -huh. like, yeah. um, I saw that. And now I, I, we are, the timelines have changed for us, where it used to take him three to six months to catch up on something that maybe I was working on. It literally takes hours now. I, I would be channeling something during the day and he comes home and starts talking about it. Really? So, yeah, like, it's crazy. It's like, um, I was writing something the other day for school, and he was literally reciting the words that were in my head, <laughs> you know, that same night. <laughs> so I know, like, it's just confirmation that it's real, but you really have to, like, take a leap of faith throughout this entire process <laughs> and you have to trust you know that whatever happens whether it is or it isn't with your twin that it's happening for your greatest good that it's happening for the collective greater good um because we're healing for everybody really yeah. you know if, like if we're on this twin flame process we're doing a lot more work than just for ourselves Definitely. at least that's what i feel oh yeah me too we're helping everyone <laughs> shift things Joe, how have the last few months been for you? The last few months, uh, sorry, I'm going to lose my voice. The last few months for me have been interesting <laughs> because I started the year last year. I had a different resolution this year. I wanted to release resistance. So I've been tested and tested and tested to come out of my comfort zone. And because I said I'm not going to be resistant, I just said, okay. Everything I just said, okay to. And the ride has been very smooth. Um, things have come into my circle that I've needed for the business, for personal, you know, for friendship, for family. And I honestly must say that the abundance that I have been experiencing is truly, it's like a dream come true because things that you, I have worked for so long, worked so hard for. Now I just sit back and for example, Christmas, I went an Xbox one. I went a, um, I went a, um, a, GoPro. What, a GoPro. And for our football camp, I was going to buy a GoPro along with the camera equipment I had so I could put it on one of the players so we can track them going through the drills and everything like that. And I get a GoPro. I'm like, oh, I'm so <laughs> glad I, I made this. Instant like, manifestation. I, right. I was like, do I buy this camera and the GoPro? Someone said, just hold, just hold off on the GoPro. And boom, I went a GoPro. Xbox One. I needed a big, <laughs> big present for my son. Put the Xbox One in the box, boom, I'm the best dad in the world. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and being able to trust the the voices I have, you know, the guides, the the intuitions, the feelings I have, being able to separate that from ego, because you know, ego will cause resistance. Ego will cause you to doubt yourself. Cause we'll we'll have a little um exercise, you know, guess what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say in my mind I'll see 46 and I'll be like uh, no that can't be right 52 um, it's 44 but 45 and I'm like oh I was about to say 46 why did I say it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so again I just keep telling myself I just need to release resistance whatever comes out it's coming from a place as if a parent is looking towards a child the child doesn't have the perspective they don't have the experience 
to understand the road they're taking, to understand the lessons that are coming across their path, where the adult have been through those things before, so they're going to help guide you. Your higher self is going to help guide you. You just got to be able to be open, open, non yeah, open. to it. <laughs> yeah, so this year I'm working on being open. Last last year it was, you know, working on you know trying to heal myself and keep just dig deeper and try to dissect why I feel a certain way and try to get in touch with more of the emotional side because we Marita and I had a conversation. And I realized I didn't know how to express emotions, you know. Mm -hmm. And she said something else. She's like, well, could it be that the emotions you feel, you are labeling those with something negative? And, you know, I was like, I've never thought about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this feeling that I feel on my stomach, normally I'm going to clench my fist up. I'm going to flinch. I'm going to do something. And this time it's like, let me try to learn to walk all over again. Let me learn to just be happy. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to have what I want in life because I've put in the work. And my intention has to be in the most highest place. And when those things are lined up, then if I don't get what I want, then I know I need to just trust and keep moving forward because those things will come when I need them to. So right. sometimes we're not ready or it's not the right timing. <sighs> exactly. Tell me about it. When I started, <laughs> when I first started this business, you know, I didn't have the same experience three years ago that I had today. Cause you literally have to go through three years of experience. You have to go through the Christmas. You have to go through the downs. You have to go through the ups. And I spoke to somebody and they said, you're going to do great things, but you're just not ready yet. I was like, what do you mean? I'm not ready. I don't understand what that means. If I'm ready three years from now, then I'm going to be ready right now. I just haven't gotten there yet. So all the hard work, the 48 hours, the fights, the struggles, everything is starting to blossom at this point right now. So my lesson, my advice for everyone out there, if you're feeling anger, if you're feeling triggered, if you're feeling like this person is attacking you, please do what I do. I take a deep breath, I blow it out, and I ask, what is my lesson? This is a mirror. What is my lesson? Everybody in this place, everybody in your experience is here for a reason to guide your personal journey and your growth. And they're here for a reason. So I truly accept I will move forward with, again, least resistance. And I was a little fearful, to be honest with you, to open to open up to you, Marla. I haven't said this to Marita yet. I was a little fearful of the um, twin flame thing because I said, like, what if I don't live up to it? Mm -hmm. You know, what if I don't embody the exact mantra, the mind frame, the mindset that you need to be in this community? Like, I grew up in, in a home where there really wasn't love. So how do I embody pure love? Uh, I don't, I don't have that for you, but we do. It's in us. Wrong. I was going to say yeah. you're wrong. Wrong. Yeah. There's Doesn't a lot of love perfect. coming through right now. Let me tell you. Yes. Yeah. I, I feel it, you know, and I, I definitely, you know, I'm truly in a different space right now. And, yeah, you know, I just definitely want to thank you because without you helping in this situation, I believe we could have gotten here maybe five years from now. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> yeah, I truly believe that too. It would have taken a lot longer because no. <laughs> when you're in that space, like regardless of how you know how to process things, when you're in a space of um, anxiety and desperation and I need something, you know, you're not thinking straight. You're not thinking clearly. And then you have these guides, you know, yeah, just like a spirit guide, Marla was there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> knowing exactly what to say and knowing how to direct my attention and, um, you know, being able to combine, you know, the astrology with the tarot and like the twin flame thing. Like I could have gone to any psychic and I would have not been able to get that type of guidance. You know what I mean? Like nobody would understand that, but it's like you have more tools 
you know, under your belt. So, like, everybody needs guidance, you know? Like, everybody is going through this life, (laughs) and they don't know what's coming tomorrow. You know, you can predict things here and there, but you don't really know until you walk through it. Absolutely. And and we learn from each other, you know? Um, I learn from my kids, (laughs) you know? Um, To me, every single opportunity, it, every th- single situation is an opportunity for learning something and that something is going to help me be more knowledgeable you know because like he was saying when you're a teenager you feel like you know it all mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know and you think you have the map and you can just walk through those doors and then you know exactly what you're getting yourself into but as you grow spiritually and you're more mature you stop reacting and you start observing And then you start learning, (laughs) you know, because there's 7 billion different perspectives. So there's 7 billion different realities. And to be able to step back and understand that you can learn from other people's realities, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and that's really, you know, what the basis of what we're trying to do with our mission is we're trying to help guide other people too. You know, like understanding what we know and understanding that uh, everybody's on their own personal journey, but every person is made up of so many thousands of complex things. And Mm -hmm. there's got to be a way to like help reach this optimum state for manifestation. Yes. (laughs) You know, and you get there. By not just worrying about one thing, you know, you have your 3D physical body that you cannot ignore, that you have to take care of. You have your emotional state and your past childhood traumas that you need to work through and heal. And you have your current roles, you know, as uh, a mother, a sister, um, a, a, a a student, you know, there's so many things that, that one does in a day, you know, I'm a doctor to my kids, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a counselor to my friends, <laughs> you know, there are so many things that we have to do and every single aspect makes up who we are. And when we are able to like process everything, we can function at optimum performance And we can get there a lot quicker and being able to raise these vibrations to help the collective in a more effective way. Um, And that's really what we're trying to do. Awesome. So um, you're going to be offering guidance for people in all different areas then, correct? Correct. Yes. So we're, um, we're establishing ourselves a self soul care Um, we're going to have our website up pretty soon and we're going to be offering intuitive guidance in pretty much any aspect of life, um, that it's mm kind of like life coaching as well, right? Yep. It's kind of like life coaching. Um, I like to call it life designing, (laughs) you know, because you're, um, I understand psychology, you know, and I'm going to school for that right now. So Um, really a lot of what happens with our anxieties and our um, discord is that we have gone away from our true identity. You know, we've created a persona outside of ourselves that is supposed to be uh, this perfect persona to please everybody else but ourselves. And we are going away from our true authentic selves. And really, this is just a way of um, helping people come back to themselves, to their authentic selves, but understanding that there's a chemistry to things. Things play off of each other. So if you're in a spiritual journey, but you're eating McDonald's and French fries and and pop all day long, and you're not taking care of yourself, or you're not nurturing yourself, or you're not taking time to nurture your relationships, or, um, you know, focus on how you can better um, your finances, you know, everything plays on each other. So what I plan on doing is kind of like, um, you know, eventually releasing little by little videos to give tips on all these different aspects, uh, but also helping people on a one-on-one guide them um, through whatever it is that they need guidance 
at the moment, you know, and um, we're very serious about helping the collective and, um, you know, we hope that those that do come to us are called to come to us because they're serious about their growth, they're serious about uh, their own journey, um, you know, they're not looking for anything outside of themselves to fix themselves. It's just about gaining clarity, guidance, um, a roadmap, so to speak, to reach that optimum self state. Yeah, I mean, it can be overwhelming. It like, is. I never really is. thought about it until you mentioned it. But yeah, like every single aspect of your life comes under effect. So it does. And I truly believe in chemistry. Yeah. You know, like this twin flames, you know, like me and Joe share this chemistry with each other, that if we were interacting with an ex, let's say that chemistry is different, <laughs> you know, it's more chaotic, but our chemistry, our body chemistry and spiritual chemistry and emotional chemistry all plays together very well for many different reasons. And there's the astrology portion of things. And then we all have a, a personality type and we have numerology. You know, there's so many different things. And the and more that we get tools and they're all just tools just to get to know ourselves, just to find guidance on what is it that how can we work on our strengths, you know, versus focusing our, on our weaknesses. Um, so, again, that's that's what I, I would hope to bring um, everybody is just an opportunity to, um, to find these tools, you know, to better um, find themselves and work on their mission on what they're really truly here to do. Because when you're distracted and you're not in the right space, you're moving away from your mission or you're not walking towards it. Um, so we hope to bring that um, to anybody who's seeking for that type of clarity. I'm excited to have you guys. <laughs> yeah, me no. too. I mean, the I've been officially to in the community. <laughs> yes, I know. I've been I've been trying to run away from it for a while, <laughs> but my guides keep like putting this in front of me. Like, nope, you can't run from it. It's your time. It's your time to shine, girl. <laughs> yeah. And Joe's gonna be working on this with you all the way, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So part of the self-soul care that we have in there also, one of the areas that you asked about my awakening, I started juicing a while ago. I went vegan for a little bit. I cut out all the processed foods out of my body because I want to flush. You know, if you think about a car that has the engine that hasn't had an oil change and it's gunk just built up in there, mm -hmm. your finely tuned machine is not going to run at, at its optimum peak performance. So we have recipes for juices to help you connect spiritually because as you bring this life into your body, the life force into your body, you're actually feeding the cells in your body, giving it everything it needs to be able to run to become younger, healthier, happier. And with the juicing, we have different recipes to help heal portions of the body, illnesses and things like that. We have a success story. My cousin came out of the out of the Marines and she were, she was on 12 different pills and she was depressed and she realized I was going to go, I was doing a vegan diet and she said, I want to do it. And most people, you don't get met by that type of action. It's more of a, what? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the meat? <laughs> she literally yeah. gave What her, do you eat? <laughs> uh, right. Like, how do you get your protein? I was like, how do the cows get their protein? <laughs> right. <laughs> So she literally threw all the meat out of her refrigerator, gave it to her cousin, and we went on this six-month juice diet, and that's what literally changed my life. And as I go back through this process, Marisa and I, she's been such an instrumental part of my health because we played a very a very uh, vital partnership with each other as we were juicing. And even though we were going through some issues, we always had juicing. We came back to that. And I noticed after I started juicing for a few days, I would channel messages so clearly. I would have, I would say things that only resonated with this person. I would use certain words. They said, why did you use that word? I was like, I don't know. I just saw a picture of a train. <laughs> and I said it. And they're like, that's the one thing that, you know, just like, okay, wow, that's cool. But then it happened over and over and over. And we went through a three-day cleanse. We would go through the weekend. One of the weekends, 
we went through a seven day cleanse. Yeah. Like, initially, and I'm telling you, like, for me wanting to connect with him and like having that juicing experience, he like we were so connected at that moment. <laughs> you know, like I felt mm-hmm. like it helped us um, clear everything, clear our mind, clear our spirits, clear our bodies, so that we can focus like on what was important. Um, and he has this amazing ability to channel, you know, things as well when he's talking to people and helping them, mm-hmm. but specifically in the nutrition and fitness area. Cause even with me, you know, I'm going through this health journey myself and all of a sudden he'll channel a workout that I should do, <laughs> you know, that'll work on a certain part of my body. And I'm like, okay, I'll try that. Well, it wasn't, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't that easy going at first. I was super resistant, <laughs> but, uh, but now that I've lost some resistance to that, I will do what he tells me and, um, it'll work exactly like where I want it to work, you know? So he has this amazing ability <laughs> to mm-hmm. channel workouts and, and, um, channel nutrition for people. Um, so definitely looking to incorporate that and even you know do some joint intuitive guidance together for anybody who's maybe um, needing some clarity on this twin flame journey as well you you can give me some juicing recipes i love juicing yeah, absolutely <laughs> i'll have to work mm-hmm. with you guys on that <laughs> for sure i we'll usually have to make meet the up. same thing <laughs> every time we'll have to meet up and we'll make you something yeah sounds good we, we gotta go up to um to your area <laughs> yes. Sooner than later. <laughs> Spring is coming. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So this one last piece I want to talk about the the juicing aspect. If you think about the food that we put into our body, the animals that we that we have in the farms, a lot of them are prisoners and they're born into captivity. They don't realize they have rights. A lot of them have anxiety. They have fear. And we are transferring that same energy into our body today, and we don't know where it comes from. We have no clue, and we think it's us. So being able to lift that veil and bring some clarity into your life gives you the ability to at least peek your head above that water and see your goal, where you want to go, where you want to be. It's okay to bounce back and forth between your higher self and go back into, you know, the 3D world because I, Marita watches me all the time because I've got to go into this world. I've got to talk with clients. I've got to do certain things. And sometimes some of these lower energies will bring me down, but it's about balance. And that's one of the biggest things that with me being the number eight life path, my number eight in me wants to be a workaholic. Everything has to be about business. It has to be about work. And with Marita bringing that balance to my eight, it has really helped me thrive. Mm -hmm. So that clarity, the juicing, being able to get the gunk out of my system so I could think clearly for once allowed me to be able to trust her and allowed us to be able to work a lot better. And it allowed for this union, for this twin flame to actually connect and trust and release resistance. I love that you keep using that word because that's the word that I kept getting when I was channeling message for the divine masculine. They're releasing was... resistance. <laughs> but, you That's know, amazing. And, and I just want to say, though, too, that we all have the masculine within us. So I know in my own life, I am also releasing a lot of resistance to things. Mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, we all are doing that right now. This is going to be yeah, a big year for um, overcoming our fears, I think. Yes. Just like Absolutely. That's, that's how I feel. Like everything that comes up, I'm just facing it and walking through it this this is the year you know there's a lot of changes and you know when we if we can all come together we have a network like-minded people the twin flames we utilize that love because love is going to trump overall and love is definitely a lot stronger than fear fear can only get, put you in two different directions where love opens you up and it lets you realize that we are all one at the end of the day. We are all connected. We all breathe the same air. We all came from the same dust. We all came from the same speck. So once we realize that the person that you're fighting is actually your mirror, <laughs> you're fighting yourself. And when you realize that, you can start working on yourself, your soul, and you'll get some care in yourself. But anyways, um, 
when you work on yourself and you just shift, people have a way of shifting right along with you. Absolutely. This is a, a perfect testament, Marla, of how all the work I do is like received by him because he's not in between flame groups or community. Where is this using all this verbiage from? <laughs> you know what I mean? He was afraid yep. of like not embodying, you know, who he's supposed to be when he's like, again, divinely perfect. <laughs> yep. Just the way he is. So it's a testament, guys. Like, he knows nothing. <laughs> you, you know, it's not like he's delved deep into uh, the terminology or anything. And everything he said just goes along with. Um, what this journey is really all about. It's funny because you're the third um, couple of twins I've interviewed, um, all of which were at the Chicago conference, by the way. Mm -hmm. That was like such yeah. a magical place. Yes. Um, and all three of the men, Joe, Rob, and Jason, none of them really knew about a twin flame label or were attached to like, Jason didn't know anything about twin flames till he got to the Chicago conference. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Rob and Angie didn't know they were twins for 17 years. So wow. I know it's a big question that comes up. People want to know, do I need to tell my twin that they are twin flame or should I tell them? And will they, will they do the work if they don't know they're a twin flame? It's just a label. It's not needed. The soul knows exactly what to do. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. And I, I just knew intuitively that I didn't have to push that. You know, I just knew that it didn't matter, you know, whether he connected with it or not. Because at the end of the day, um, it was for me. It was yeah. just understanding. Like, we're, we're spiritual beings living this human experience, and we make up words or, you know, labels so that we can make sense of things. So to be honest, like I myself, like I use it as a reference, as a guide, but I don't go too deep into, you know, you know, like waves or what title is this or, you know what I mean? Like I just, I, I right. kind of go with the flow. I, I take what resonates, um, but it's okay. <laughs> we don't want to like, take it on as such an identity that... It becomes how we define ourselves. Exactly. And then is that truly ourselves? Right. Mm -hmm. Like it limits our experience and the opportunities that we can bring to ourselves. So it's important to just be open throughout this whole entire thing that maybe what you've known all this time is completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, Absolutely. you know, like, those pieces you can't make them fit that way because they're not supposed to fit for you and like every twin has their own journey and it's different like for me and joe it was okay for us to be in the same physical space even though we were in that push pull separation dynamic it was okay because that's what we needed you know, and that's mm -hmm. why certain twins have the separation phase and they may be completely emotionally open with each other, but they can't physically be together, you know, so it's hard to say, you know, it's, it's not a one size fits all for sure. And that's why we have to be able to take a look at ourselves individually and objectively and um, be open to whatever comes. Right. You just have to walk your path. Exactly. And exactly. you don't know where it's going to lead. You know, no. it, it may be your twin. It may not be your twin. You may meet <laughs> another person that's your twin. You just, you know, it's it's your mind trying to label everything where if you just allow the experience to unfold one step at a time, you'll get the information that you need when you need it. Exactly. And listen to Marla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's got something. <laughs> Well, yeah, and everybody relates with different leaders and, and, and different people speak their own language when it comes right. to the stuff. So, you know, go with what resonates. And if it doesn't, that's OK. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah. Find find what does. Right. And, and your intuition is always your best guide. You take what someone else has to offer and then you use it with your own information, your own intuition. 
Exactly. And you can't let anyone else tell you something over your own intuition, which exactly. reminds me, Maritza, I wanted to bring this up. Mm-hmm. Didn't you have someone tell you that Joe wasn't your twin flame at one point? Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout this first part of our journey, when I was like still, um, you know, with my karmic, uh, but we were already separated, my, my mentor, but at that moment she didn't know me, Tina, I got another reading from her, and she told me that he was not the one. <laughs> and in, inside of me, like, I heard what she said, but I knew it wasn't true. And I realized at that point that it was also a test for me, that mm-hmm. I had to, without a shadow of a doubt, without any outside confirmation, know that this person was somebody I, I needed to be with you know, my, my other half or my other whole, you know, like my mm-hmm. divine counterpart, whatever label it is, like I knew this connection was stronger. I knew that what she was telling me was not true. So I actually, like while I was working on myself and before I started taking classes with her, I had this mission of like proving her wrong. <laughs> 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 and then um, we started taking classes with her and, you know, everybody thought we were like, together and married at first and and then um then she like tries to marry us all the time now (laughs) she's like trying to get ordained (laughs) and then um and she has even called us twins um in her class and she is not one to even believe in this twin dynamic. <laughs> so for mm-hmm. her to say that we're twins, you know, I was like, yes, I won. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, she sees it my way. <laughs> but yeah. it was just a testament that I had to live it. You know, I couldn't mm-hmm. prove it to anyone. It wasn't about proving it to anybody. It was about proving it to myself, you know, finding out for myself what the real truth was. Well, we do get tested. Exactly. All the time. And that's the thing. Like, I feel like we deliberately get tested against what we know to be true because anything worth it is worth fighting for. And I think the universe tests you to see if you're willing to fight for it. And if you're Mm -hmm. willing to fight for it and you're willing to do the work that you're supposed to do to make it happen, then you're going to finally manifest what you're looking for or what is supposed to be there for you. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you get distracted or discouraged or, um, oh, I can't do this or this is too hard, like, it is hard. Don't get me wrong. I've had those days, too. Like, I've had times, and I've told Joe that I I wanted to give up so many times. It is not even funny. But I had to get to that point. You know, because that's when we grow, like when we stretch ourselves at that point, we're growing. I started to learn how to appreciate those moments versus, you know, being so down on myself. I'm like, oh, man, okay, here it comes. So I'm having one of those moments. I'm being triggered. I have pain bodies and and he's pulling away and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm being triggered about being abandoned or whatever the situation like. Now I can recognize it and I can appreciate it. And now I can look in and say, okay, what do I need to learn from this experience? Just like he was saying about the whole mirror, you know, for him, it's like, oh, she's doing something that's triggering me. Well, what, what is it in me? You know, how does that reflect in, in one of my aspects? Well, I know that if I'm being triggered, that there's something in me that still needs to heal. But the more I go through these triggers, the less triggering they are. And the Mm -hmm. more you master yourself, because again, this is part of what we're trying to do is self mastery so that we can go and be in that optimum state for manifestation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. (laughs) Can I I have one more question for you guys? Yep. Um, I want to talk about you blending your family because you both have young children. How is it working out for you guys? Well, it kind of just blended together like it was always meant to be. 
Um, my son used to tell me, like, I wish I had brothers and sisters. I wish I had brothers and sisters. And her daughters and son looks like look like they could be my children. <laughs> so walking around with them hanging on me, jumping on me, hugging on me, it looks normal. And my son is happier than ever because now he has new brothers and sisters, but they're respectful of each other because they have role models in front of them that show this is how you communicate with people. Mm-hmm. You don't communicate by anger or frustration. You communicate by respect. And so the children, they really, at the end of the day, have made me whole. <laughs> I will say this, that um, the environment completely changed when my karmic moved out and it was just us, you know, my kids used to cry all the time. They, it used to be a lot more chaotic. And, um, once this environment was healthy and thriving, like the kids responded to that so well. Mm. And, um, his son just fit right in, you know, there's like this huge gap between my oldest and my middle. What are and the his, injuries? If you can share that. Yeah, so my oldest son, is he's 14. Then my second is uh, my daughter. She's six. And then I have a three-year-old daughter. And his son is nine years old. <laughs> so he, mm-hmm. like, fits right in the <laughs> middle of that gap. And he gets along with my son so well. Like, they play together. Um, they sit on the couch together to play their video games. And the best part about this is, which is – one of the things that brings me the most fulfillment about this union is that me and him, me and Joe can talk to our boys. Like we're teaching them about life. And we talk about, like we're talking to you right now, Marla, you know, mm-hmm. we're talking to like collective. We talk like that to our kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're so receptive to that. And I feel like we're helping set up their future so well, you know, because we're, we're talking to them like adults and we're talking to them about spirituality and we're teaching them about business and we're teaching them about how to be respectful to one another and how to talk, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I had a saying that I said, I want to change the world. And I said, you know, you really got to be specific because you literally can go out in the back of the yard, dig a hole, and you literally change the world. <laughs> what do you want to, what do you, like, literally, you, you literally change the world. And what do you want to do, you know? Like, I'm a firm believer that you don't change the world through wars. You change the world through children. So mm-hmm. these children that are going to be the future of this world, the different energy that is going to lift this environment that we're in today, they they're more connected than we are when they, when at this age and being able to talk to them about energy, mm-hmm. it, they, they understand the energy. They yeah. understand this conversation and end of the day, like they'll hold us accountable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know, like one of the things that really brought me and Joe together, I feel is that we have these same values you know, with kids, like one of the things that I couldn't stand about my karmic is arguing in front of the kids. Like that was really the camel that I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and, um, I had that same mentality coming into this, like whatever, whatever we do, we will never argue in front of the children, but we don't really argue. (laughs) We like never argue. We have conversations that we may disagree a lot sometimes (laughs) or a lot, you know, whatever, (laughs) six and nine. We find out we're talking about the same subject. Yeah. Yeah. And then then we find out that, yes, we are talking about the same exact thing, just in different languages, you know? Um, And then my, um, my stepmom who is like my soul mom, you know, because him, her and my dad are twins. Um, she came up to me and she's like, I've never experienced such a healthy relationship, you know? And even then we weren't like together, together, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know? Um, So we, we just have this respect and this love for our kids and this love for changing the world and bettering our environment and um, just wanting to be in sync and, um, I know that we're meant to do so many great things. And for me, it definitely starts with our kids. They're our legacy, you know? 
they're going to encounter people throughout their entire lives and they're going to make an impact on their lives and it's going to be a ripple effect that it's going to be never ending and it starts right here with us with the environment that we create for them yes it's um my daughter she's she's very you know she's an old soul um, she's here to help the planet ascend, and I, I can tell that right away. She does not respond to the old methods, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, like when I was a kid, the harsh discipline, the spankings, right. and things like that. She does not mm-hmm. respond to anything like that. You you talk to her like you said, like an adult, and we talk about energies and things. We were having mm-hmm. a little telepathic game that we were playing today for example (laughs) it's amazing to watch like for me like this is this is what life is all about and um i ever since i was a little girl um when they ask you well what what do you want to be when you grow up and my answer would be happy i just want to be happy so if i were to reflect back on my life right now am i successful yes (laughs) Because I'm happy, you know, and I've created the, you know, I've fostered and nurtured the environment that I can thrive and be happy and hopefully like spread that happiness to other people and help them find that within themselves. I'm sure you will. (laughs) (laughs) I try. I try. (laughs) So tell people how they can get in touch with you again. Okay, well, our website is selfsoulcare.com, and we'll have contact information on there. We'll also have a Facebook page, and um, hopefully have that linked to this video uh, for when it's released. And people can contact us on there, send us messages to schedule an appointment um, or a consultation. And um, we'll be able to take it from there. Hopefully there will be a lot of um, videos that will help. Um, put things together and bring clarity for people. We'll take um, suggestions on what people want to know about or what they want to hear about. And um, Joe will be available on a limited basis to do consultations. So I'll be um, offering maybe one or two per week on those. So, um, yep, just get a hold of us and, and we'll see how we can help you find more clarity and direction on your life's journey. We will, um, of course, link to your website and your Facebook page in the comments of -hmm. this video so people can find you easier. For sure. And, of course, if you book a reading with me or if you are – sometimes Maritza is active on Twin Astrology, answering people's questions and helping them out. So you might get in contact with her there as well. And hopefully we'll be doing something together in the future. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe another conference. Who knows? Oh, yes. At some point in time. <laughs> yes. And Joe can join us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hold you to that, Joe. <laughs> I hope you do. There's thousands of people listening to you right now that will really hold you accountable to that. <laughs> you know, after having these conversations, like, I'm so excited to go. I can't wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah we gotta that. we gotta work something out <laughs> about <laughs> when the next one's gonna be hopefully around your area so we can go to niagara falls <laughs> yes i've been that trying to amazing. get one here in niagara falls for you know well a year <laughs> a year and a half right. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's time After i think February. it's time too As soon as I get to go ahead from my guides, because right now we're all resting. That's true. And uh, we're not supposed to set anything into motion. At least I'm not. Yes. Well, we will uh, slowly uh, make things happen. (laughs) Slowly manifest (laughs) that. For for when it's time. But I I appreciate you so much, Marla. You've been amazing throughout this process. And I I hope that um, anybody that hasn't, gotten personal guidance (laughs) from you that they do because it's literally changed my life you definitely have to be open to the experience and um control what's in your control you know stop trying to control what's not controllable and um 
which ultimately piece. is you. <laughs> it's it's you. Like you're the only per like it's you. You can only control yourself, your actions and your attitude and um and how you find clarity in this process. It's all up to you. All right, if you guys are all set, I think I think we've said enough. <laughs> it's been really great though. You guys have been awesome. And now Thank it's you. like 117 on the counter. Which is another yes. great number. Synchronicity <laughs> <laughs> uh, everywhere, if I can say that right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marla. We Thank love you, you Marla. so much. I love you guys, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we'll be talking again. Bye. See ya.